Hi, I'm your host, Deborah Costu, Certified Master Dementia Strategist, and today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into communication and how we can better relate to others. I find this stuff really interesting and really exciting. I absolutely love talking about the brain. I love talking about dementia. I love everything about it. Absolutely anything related to that brain, I really, really find it very fascinating. After today's video, I hope that I have piqued your interest to learn more and more because when you're working with this population of people, you need all the help you can get. So let's start building the smart tools that you'll need going forward. So the first thing I wanna discuss is that when we're talking about communication and language, we're having issues because they actually have brain cell death resulting in damage to the brain, which in turn causes a distortion in the way that they communicate. So it's not only just the way that they communicate outwardly to us, but it's also how they're receiving the information in or receiving the information from us. So messages go in and the messages come out, or at least that's the goal. So communication is between two people or at least two people or more, right? Through the different stages of dementia, there are different ways to adjust communication strategies. And as the disease progresses, we're gonna have to change the way that we attempt to get the message in and how we are understanding the messages being sent out because their abilities will be constantly changing. So we have to adapt and we have to be able to do it quickly. We can't predict what they will understand. These changes can happen minute by minute and can go kind of back and forth, right? Sometimes we don't know what we're walking into. So we are constantly deciding what is the best way to approach them. So once you find something that works, stick with it until it doesn't work anymore. Because remember, they can't remember, right? So if something worked 10 minutes ago, it'll probably work again, repeat it. You might be like, oh my God, I keep repeating myself. But they don't remember that you just said that. So it's not the same thing over and over to them. If it works, stick with it and share that information with each other. When we talk about communication, it involves everything about us. It's who we are. Imagine if you couldn't communicate to somebody what your likes are or your dislikes are or your beliefs. When you think about it, what's really important to you as a person? Like maybe your religion is really important to you. How would you feel if you couldn't express that anymore? Or you couldn't say what you wanted to eat or that you were tired or that you really hate this outfit because there's got a great big tag that's rubbing you and irritating the crap out of you. Communication is all around us. It's everything. It makes us who we are. It makes us an individual, right? And when we lose that, we lose ourselves. We lose our individuality. Have you ever had a craving for a particular food or maybe a dessert? Like you just absolutely are dying to eat something in particular? Imagine not being able to ask to fulfill that craving. Have you ever been in a pair of pants that were just too tight or a bra that was uncomfortable and you just couldn't wait to get out of it? And your whole mood changes when you take off that uncomfortable piece of clothing? Well, just imagine not being able to communicate to someone that you're uncomfortable. When a person is struggling, it's up to us, the cognitively intact person, to help them find themselves again and help them express what their wishes are or what they're needing. They might just need a hug. Have you ever just felt like you needed a hug? You just need a friend. You just need a friendly face. Someone to listen to you, to not judge you, just to be there for you. 
So it's up to us to find out what they need and want because they can't express it any longer. So when we think about communication, what comes to mind first? How do you communicate with people? Talking, verbal, that's what comes to mind first when we think about communication. We talk back and forth and we have a conversation. But this will surprise you. Only 7% of communication is verbal. 7%. Isn't that shocking? So what's the rest of it? Actually, 55% of communication is your body language. And 38% is your facial expressions. So over 90% of communication is nonverbal. 90%. We've been doing it wrong. Who knew? So when you're working with someone who has Alzheimer's or dementia or other neural degenerative diseases, that's what we really need to be thinking about. It's so much more than our words, like way more, way, way more. So how can we present ourselves in front of that person so that they understand that we are a comfort to them and not a threat. How can we simply by using our body language and facial expressions help to get better outcomes during communication and exchanges? The reason why we communicate is to come together for something, togetherness, to be included. When you can't communicate or things are too fast for you to keep up, you're not included. Have you ever been at a movie or a class and you lose your place? You can't follow along anymore? You feel left out, like you're missing something. What does that feel like? Our job is to make sure that the person isn't being left behind. Because that's all everybody wants, right? We all want to be included. We all want to be valued, loved, to feel a sense of inclusion. We need to communicate and be more welcoming in our facial expressions and our body language. So make a conscious effort to address what our face looks like and to look more welcoming. Is this hard to do? No, it's super easy. You can fake a smile. Anybody can fake a smile. So a person with dementia is having a behavior. This is an overall way of them communicating with us because where does a behavior come from? Something is bothering them. So a behavior is a reaction to something. It's a reaction. So it's a reaction to either a person or something going on in the environment. So they're upset about something. So when they present with a behavior, that's their way of communicating to you that there's an issue. Does that make sense? When they are having a behavior, that's their way of communicating, communicating a need for you to solve their problem because they can't solve their own problems anymore. We need to help them figure out what that issue is and solve it. So in the later stage, people cannot communicate or they have a very, very limited ability. In these later stages of neurodegeneration, they might be doing things like tapping or humming. This is the only way that they can communicate. We will do anything we can in order to communicate. We will use any means possible. Have you ever heard anybody just repeat the same thing over and over? Hey, 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 hey. They want something. They need something. So that's what we have to try to figure out. What is it? Another one would be rocking. Uh, rocking is very common, especially in the later stages. It's just what they have left. 
Whatever they have left in the brain is what they will use. Don't stop them. Let them be. Rocking can also be a strategy to self-soothe. Self so when you're working with people with dementia, we always talk about slowing down and taking your time, right? We've all heard that one. That when we have to slow down because they have brain damage, slower sentences and use fewer words, we all know we need to slow down. But sometimes it's hard, right? Because talking and communicating just comes naturally. The reason it's important to slow down is because it can take 20 seconds or longer for someone with dementia to hear, process, and respond to communication. That's a really long time and almost impossible for a normal brain to, to wait for a reply. Sometimes when we're waiting for a response from the person with dementia, we will repeat the phrase and maybe use a different word, hoping that a different word that means the same thing might get through the brain damage. And sometimes this will work. Other times it will actually break their concentration. So what I mean by that is if you ask them to get dressed and you're waiting for a few seconds and then you say it again, they're about halfway through the processing of the words and now you've just interrupted that process and they have to start all over again. This can get very frustrating for the person with dementia. They're still trying to catch what you said and now you're talking again and breaking their concentration. So if you notice that they're getting frustrated, then be sure to give them more time. That's how you can kind of know if we have to change our communication techniques. Again, now, we're gonna look at the use of using actions or signs to show people what we want them to do. Because again, only 7% is our words or our vocabulary, only 7%. And that's with someone who's cognitively intact. That's not someone even with neurodegeneration. Uh, we can demonstrate for them or model the action or task that we want them to do. Show them by using your acting abilities what, that you want them to get dressed or brush their teeth. Remember, modeling or body language is interpreted more in the brain. Use those verbal cues. Adapt to the person with dementia. The absolute most impressive thing above all else that I hope your biggest takeaway is that we think about how do we transfer a feeling of compassion and understanding without using your words. Because if we feel love and comfort, we won't have behaviors. We will have peace and harmony. Ah, yes, peace and harmony. What more could we need? So work on your communication techniques and remember it's so much more than our words and language. It's really about your facial expressions and your body language. You can do this, together we can. How would you like to walk into work every day knowing that you can handle any situation that comes your way? I can teach you how to be a dementia specialist just like me simply by logging onto my website at answersaboutalz.org. You can be put on our mailing list and notified of all of our upcoming trainings. I will teach you all of the skills that you need to feel confident no matter what challenges you are facing.